Yes, that's right. It's the Survivor Know-It-Alls live here once again on a Wednesday night after Survivor. And, boy, my jaw is still on the floor, Stephen Fishback. Crazy, crazy episode. You know, um, blindside after blindside this season. You know, every time we think, you know, you and I last week were like, well, this is it for Spencer. He had his moment. Next week he's gone for sure. Uh, and and we were so wrong. You know, we underestimated uh, both Tony's lunacy and uh, Tony's willingness to to do the big move and make the game a big thing. And I think that's that's part of what's so exciting about tonight. And uh, you know, we we knew this episode had to come, the one where we sort of like you know got rid of Jeffra, and now we can really get back into the game. And uh, <laughs> six players left. This might be one of the most exciting final sixes, where I really think that any single one of them could could win. You know, you've got. You've got uh, e even Wu, even you know he could sort of pull a Fabio at this point and pull it out. I could see a, a case for any one of these players winning, and that to me is really exciting. It's a very exciting final six, and once again we have to say, as we've said many times this season, thank you God for Tony Velachos. Thank yeah. you for send. Thank you Survivor Gods. Thank you Lynn Spillman. Thank you Mark Burnett. Thank you for sending Tony to us because I. I don't know if this was a good move or a terrible move, but as far as an entertaining season, this guy has delivered the goods. And I think that that's part of his motivation too. You know, he's like, he knows that like, well, I got two choices, and like, how much of a, of a better thing to do would it be to do the blind side against my own alliance? You know, I feel like he gets a thrill out of it. And, and you know, we saw that from the very beginning when he like had his crazy plan with with uh, Jeremiah to, like, put shade on Jeremiah by, like, giving him a fake idol clue, you know? Like, what a ridiculous move, but but it caused drama. It, it you know, it, it was great for the cameras. And uh, here, you know, whether or not you like the move, you have to like the fact that he made a move. Love it. Love it. So we'll talk about everything uh, as far as Tony's move, the repercussions, how the game board is going to look now in the final six, and everything that goes along with tonight's episode. Uh, let me just set everything up here. Of course, we have the chat room live, over 600 people uh, in the chat room right now, about 800 people watching live now with more showing up here on robhasawebsite.com. You can get your tweets into the show. Use the hashtag RHAP. You want to get your comments and questions into the show as well. Use our, go to our YouTube channel, which you can get to at robhasawebsite.com slash YouTube, and you can post your comments on the question, and then Jessica Frey is going to bring them all up for us later on in the show. Tomorrow, Big Survivor Thursday, your opening act tomorrow, exit interview with Jeffra. You no. up, Stephen? I can't wait to hear what she has to say. I bet she was secretly running the game. <laughs> so we'll talk to Jeffra tomorrow morning. Plus, uh, I also I recorded earlier today a This Week in Survivor History with Jordan Kalish. And so I'm going to uh, have that for you, a little added bonus in the exit interview while you wait all day for me to post the main event which is going to be, uh, it's not a covered item. You can, it's going to be as, as good as a steak sandwich and ribs mm. and quesadillas all put together. Mm -hmm. Tyson Never. Apostle. Oh! For, the reigning and, champion. The reigning Survivor champion for an interview and taking your voicemails as well. Wow. So the double header. A double header. Tyson doing double duty. It's like when somebody is the host and musical guest on Saturday Night Live. Right. We're going to have Tyson, so get your voicemails in for Tyson during the, uh, for our, my conversation with Tyson, robiswebsite.com slash voicemail or 323-282-RHAP. Wait, is Tyson going to be the, uh, is, will he be performing a song as well? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, you should ask. Uh, he, he hung out with Otis for long enough. You would think right. that he maybe. Yeah, he now he's ready. To, he's got an All acoustic right. career. Steven, here's where I want to start tonight. Yeah. Do we also, in addition to thanking the Survivor Gods, mm -hmm. is it time for us to eat crow and thank Tyler Perry himself? Wow. Was this crazy, crazy, crazy move done by Tony because he feels like he has two or three more weeks where nothing can happen to him and he cannot be voted out? You know... I mean, we touched on it a little bit last week. We, like, alluded to the fact that, like, maybe he'll feel comfortable. Or I did it in my head. I don't know if I said that out loud. Um, that, like, maybe he would, like, feel comfortable enough to make a move. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to like give credit to the Tyler Perry Idol because it's so objectively bad. It's like, you know, what if what if like the Nazis erected a really nice statue? Are you like, well, they made that great statue? Like, no, they're still Nazis. And and so too is the Tyler Perry Idol, the Nazi of idols. You can uh, run with that. Let's, let's not <laughs> use the Nazis at all with this. Okay, let's just let's. Yeah. Let's just not use that as an example yeah. at all. But yeah, okay. is Tony playing the game right now as if he is invincible? And, I think you're, yeah. And because of that, is he making incorrect moves because he feels like he is invincible? You know, the thing about Tony that I think we have to really give him credit for is that he did not purchase anything at that auction. He is starving. He is seeing the people around him eating. He is... Uh, you know, he's got the Tyler Perry idol, and yet he is still playing the game full tilt, as though he did not have the Tyler Perry idol, as though he did not have this safe out. He's going full speed ahead uh, every second to, to do the best thing, to, to put himself in the best position, to put his alliance in the best position. So, uh, you know, I think that's just Tony. You know, I think Tony is always going to be trying to make the best move, and, like, maybe the Tyler Perry idol gives him confidence, um, but... Like, I think I, I think he's always gonna like push himself to do the hardest thing or the better thing, no matter what. You know, it's it's so odd to me because on one hand I feel like okay, well Tony is pro is playing you know hard and fast because he has the Tyler Perry idol, but he's also p playing increasingly paranoid and scared at the same time. So I don't really know if Tony makes this move because he's afraid of the, the women's alliance is a thing, or because he feels like he is invincible to anybody coming after him, and that's why he can make this move. I think it's got to be he really believes in the women's alliance. I mean, I, I you know, he didn't seem to be in, in a place of overconfidence when he decided to vote out Jeffra. You know, I mean, I guess he's a little bit, you know, he is immune from the repercussions next week, and even in that sort of teaser for next week, you know, he was like, okay, vote for me, you know, to cast. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe it does have an effect. I think it's, it's you know, the only Tony will be able to say sort of what Tony's psychology is, and, and even then he probably won't truly be able to say it. I mean, the little bit that I can sort of relate to this is in Survivor the Amazon, when we were down to Final 7, that was when I had the chance to vote out Alex, and I could have gone either way. I could have decided not to go through with the big move or decided to go with the big move, and I won immunity at Final 7. And that was, for me, that sort of clinched it, where it was like, well, I'm going to make the big move now because I feel, I, I know that it definitely can't backfire and I can't go home this round. So right. I wonder if having all those idols in his pocket, a second idol tonight even, yeah. does that make him more emboldened to make more big moves? Um, you know, I think it has to, right? I think it has to to a certain degree. But the other thing is, like, like I was saying, you know, Tony's been bold. You know, Tony has made these big moves all along. So it's not like we're, like, seeing a cautious player suddenly opening up his strategy. You know, we're just seeing a bold player continue to act boldly. Um, and, you know, if Spencer had the Tyler Perry idol, like, what would he do? That might be, like, more of a shift in, in tactics for him. But I think Tony's, like, nature is to make the big, aggressive move. Uh, and when he's presented with two choices, I think he's always going to take the one that's a little bit more out there, uh, is a little bit more camera-friendly, and is, you know, uh, I, I think that's just his, his who he is. Let's take it from Tony's perspective, and then I want to talk about everybody else in the game and where they stand. This came up a little bit on Twitter and in the chat room. Some people were saying, why vote out Jeffra? She's the weakest player in the game. Yes, she was talking about potentially flipping against Tony. Why not take out a stronger player potentially in the women's alliance, such as a Cass, such as a Trish? Any issue with going for Jeffra, who's arguably the weakest player in the potential women's alliance? I mean, Jeffra's also the one who's most likely to flip, right? Who has like a, you know, who has said that she wants to flip, who Tony knows doesn't like him. She's also a beauty. You know, you've got a bunch of beauties on the jury. You know, she's the last beauty to go, basically. Now it's three brains and three brawn. Um, and, you know, and maybe, you know, she has the least blood on her hands. You know, every tribal council, she's talking about how... Uh, you know, she how outraged she was by the LJ blind side. So, you know, you hope the jury won't vote for someone who didn't play the game super hard, but at the same time, you know, you see people win uh, out of out of bitterness towards towards the you know the aggressor. So if it's a Tony, you know, Jeffra, Trish final three, you know, maybe Jeffra could have pulled it out. 
staying on this for one more moment, did you like Tony basically calling his shot and basically throwing Jeffra under the bus at Tribal Council about that she was, he found out that she was trying to vote him out at the last Tribal Council? Did you like him bringing all that up to the surface in front of everybody at Tribal Council? You know, I, I feel like Tony is one again, like one of those players who's just always gonna like say what's on his mind. I that it, when I was watching that, that didn't make me think that Jeffra was going home. If anything, I thought, oh, that could you know he, that that just could be misdirection for Spencer. You know, maybe he's still voting out Spencer. Like I fully believe, I fully did not know who was going home. I mean, did you? Did you really? I believe you, Spencer was going home. I was like, okay, yeah, that's right. Two votes Jeffra, two votes Spencer, right. and now here comes Spencer, Spencer, and so. I was very surprised because I felt like once they showed us that when Spencer was looking for the idol and Tony was like, I don't know, why is Spencer looking for idols? If he's looking for idol, why isn't he with me? Uh, and so, and then I said, okay, I forget it. All right, Spencer is the next person to go home. So I was yeah. really, really surprised. But if the vote was for Jeffrey, and I agree with you, if it was a misdirection for he was going to vote out Spencer, then it makes sense to sort of right. you know, maybe uh, throw, throw people off. But I don't even know about that. Why piss off somebody in your alliance at that point? But... The fact that, why bring that up at Tribal Council? Because I feel like if I was out there, that's the last thing I would do is, you know, I'm going to vote out Alex at Tribal Council. I'm not talking about, so I heard Alex was blah, 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 uh, and he's, uh, you know, he wants to make an alliance. Like, why t alert everybody to what's about to happen? Well, you know, I think that's like a good, you know, I think you see it a, a lot in this in this season is that people are very forthright about their thoughts about people at tribal council. And it's not even, you know, it's not necessarily uh, like strategic at all. It's like they're really looking at tribal council as like the place to talk about their issues. Yeah, it's a place where you could t talk about your feelings. And you get counsel from Jeff, from Jeff Probst, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about how this the game changes now, and I think it definitely does here in a major way. So next week, that we we basically have three pairs of two, and we have Spencer and Tasha who stick together amazingly, still are together, and then you have Wu and Tony, and then sort of the reluctant pair of. Cass and Trish. Yeah. I know, Stephen, that you love Trish. I do okay? love Trish, yeah. So what what happens? Which of these, do you assume that two of these two pairs end up getting together? And if so, which two? I mean, I am like, at this point, I, I'm i back on like the Spencer Wins bandwagon. You know, this is really, bad. I mean, I'm so not sure. Like, I can this see Spencer guy... Yeah. Has more lives than uh, than a cat than, than anybody. I mean, this you can, He is unkillable, and it's like he gets so much airtime every episode. I know you don't love talking about the edit, but like, and it's all positive. The only negative things anyone has ever said is that Cass has called him like a bratty twenty-one-year-old boy, um, and it's like. You know, when we were watching last week, you know, every or you know, I think America was thinking, well, this is it for Spencer and his alliance. Uh, you know, he got a lot of great, great airtime, and he was a great character. But he's like Malcolm; he's going off, you know, seventh. Um, you know, but 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 now it's it's really anybody's game, and and they very well could pull over uh, a Cass, or you know, and it could be the brains. You know, that 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 quote from Spencer. That you know, the very beginning, all we have to do is go through two tribes to get to the end. You know, it could be the brains at the end. How do Spencer and Tasha get to the end from here? I think it's you pull over Cass and you vote out. Uh, you know, maybe maybe even Trish is willing to flip. You know, and, and we saw Wu making. I mean, as you know, I'm I'm preview averse. Um, but uh, you know, maybe they they make a move on uh, on Wu. Maybe they make a move on Trish. So do you feel like, would the right call be, and again, they don't know that yeah. the Tyler Perry idol exists. So but they know that he has an idol. They know he has an idol. So that almost, I feel like... Um, it hurts Tony. It, it, well, it keeps people like, it's almost like a defense system for the Tyler Perry idol. The Tyler Perry idol is like the fail-safe. Yeah. Uh, in case they get through the first line of defenses. <laughs> anyway, but it, with Tony, it's so it, anything really could happen. So it really is. Uh, we're, whereas last week we were very fatalistic about this whole thing. Um, I really feel like this whole thing is is very much back wide open. So the move next week, if you're Spencer and Tasha, you think that you go with Cass and Trish and vote out Wu. 
Yeah, I think you make the strong play to Cass and Trish. Like, hey, we got to go to the. You know, Tony is is completely unreliable. Any trust, you know, he's he's twice he's pulled out the rug from under you. Like, how are you so naive as to think? You know, and maybe there was a reason with LJ. Yeah, LJ was a strategic threat, but you can't make that case with Jeffra. You know, no one is making the case that like Jeffra was really going to undermine their alliance. I'm telling you, I think Tony thinks he's going to go back to Cass and Trish and say, okay, look, 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 look. Okay, I, yeah, I boarded them. I, look, I, what, what, the four. Just... <laughs> We're still, go we still got an alliance. We're still, it's Spencer and Tasha. They're the next two to go. Um, that's possible. Yeah, I think that's possible. You know, I think that's, that's what he's going to say. I think in his mind, he's going to say that. You know, he it's he's so fixated on getting out Tasha or getting out the girls. You know, it's it's so interesting. Uh, Joe Reed, who writes um, for uh, the Atlantic's Wired uh, blog, said to me, you know, the the women's alliance is always a misdirection. You know, that's what they always, you know, they always tease us with the women's alliance when when it's gonna be business as usual. But in this case, like the women's the threat of the women's alliance, like actually was a threat, and Tony really reacted to that. Okay, Stephen. We talked a lot about Trish last week. We both said that we thought she was a real dark horse after last week. Are Trish's chances to win the game dead at this point? Wait, why dead? Because it, it, tell me the scenario where Trish gets to the end now. Well, if Trish sticks with Tony and Wu, and Tony has like these eighteen idols, and maybe Cass flips, and maybe they vote for Tony, and he plays one of his, you know, his plays a super idol and votes out Spencer, then they the, the three of them get to the end, and Trish is sitting there with Tony and Wu. No one respects Wu because he was Tony's, you know, little henchman, and and people hate Tony. So Trish wins, and she has enough strategic moves. She's enough of a resume to justify a win. How about that? I think he drops to fourth in my mind after this tonight. Where's how is she going out fourth? Who's voting out Trish? No. Well, not that she's going to come in fourth. I think that in in my personal power rankings of right. who, who's going to win the season now, I feel like she's fourth. So you've got Spencer, Tony, Tasha, Trish. Yes. Yeah, and Wu is last, or Cass is last. Boy, um, I think I'd have to have Cass last, but I feel like there's a big there's a drop off between where I have Trish and then Wu and Cass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to make a brief point about the idol. You know, like we talk hear a lot of idol. yeah. Let's talk about it. so we hear a lot of conspiracy theories about you know production placing the idol and giving the clues to to Tony. Like in this case, like this should debunk those conspiracy theories. You know, like Tony waited the entire auction. He put all of his money against Spencer. You know, these are the only two guys who are willing to go to the mat for it. The two biggest characters. Um, you know, Tasha bowed out. You know, her reasons were justified. Um, then it's a rock draw, and then he finally finds it after digging all over the place for, you know, who knows how long. I mean, to me, it's like the reason that the big characters always get the idols is because they're the ones who are searching for them, who are making the big plays. That's why they're big characters, and that's why they have idols. It's not like, it, it, it's it's not a coincidence, you know, it's not like production favoring big characters. It's the reason they're big characters is because they're the ones making the moves. Yeah, I agree. I feel like if you are feeling like is production trying to fix this by giving Tony two idols, I feel like that's not the case. I feel like if production was trying to get involved, I think Spencer would get the other idol. Right. And then at least, it's like, oh, now we have Spencer and Tony moving on. But for Tony to have two idols, I mean, I can't imagine anybody in production is like, we need, just keep giving Tony more <laughs> idols. He, like, he needs a third idol. Uh, we yeah. still don't know about this guy. But he's been he's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, so far. What, what did you think about the auction? Like, is that is that now is the auction now broken as a concept? Well, if everybody knows that there's something coming in the auction, then I feel like we needed something to sort of throw that off because it was like the people, the survivors outplayed the auction, yeah. and so we got to that twist where we have the rocks coming out. And so I don't know if we needed like letters from home or something else involved with that to sort of mix things up. But um, three people basically of the seven were sitting out and not bidding for things. Here's where I, I don't I don't know how they're all not going home with like 300 bucks each. Even the people that ate. Uh, here were the dollar values of the things that went in the auction: eighty dollars, a uh, hundred dollars, a hundred twenty dollars. Uh, I'm sorry, twenty dollars, sixty dollars. Forty dollars. So if you add up the other items that all went, it wasn't even five hundred dollars. You know they do they do edit the auction obviously, sure, so more course. things are purchased. But it still was clear that it was very 
you know, the, the prices were outrageously cheap. And, it, you know, it's fun to watch someone spend $400 for a grilled cheese sandwich. It's not so fun to watch someone spend $20 for a grilled cheese sandwich. You know, that, that's, that's the price in New York. Yeah, that's right. You go to Manhattan if you want that. Yeah. Um, and it's also, I think, broken where I think it was like very, okay, first covered item is okay. You know, then it's like a second, second covered right. item is okay. Third Bad. covered item, everybody stay away. You right. Know? So I think that everybody was pretty much on, you know, maybe it's time to go back to the drawing board a little bit with the with the auction. Yeah. Did you like the twist where now with the auction, instead of the first person to blurt out $500, now we get to uh, draw rocks if multiple people want to bid $500? I thought that was a cool idea that you, that people could like enter in at at that at the max price. Uh, what do you? I mean, what do you think about Tasha's decision? I thought Tasha made a smart move. You know, we've seen things in the past where there's both a challenge advantage and an idol, and I thought Tasha made the right decision in that moment. But what did you think? Hard to say because I don't know how many items that they had done before right. beforehand. So, like, I'm not exactly sure. I kind of feel like if they had a clue to the hidden immunity, I'd have to go back and take a look at when they've done that previously. Because I yeah. feel like that would come out before a advantage in the challenge. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not sure what the if there's like a, a you know an orderly you know an orderly progression of of things. Um, but I did kind of feel like. Um, you know, you came this far. I feel like you were committed to make to doing this. Uh, you know, why why not do it? I mean, she won the challenge anyway. But you know, what are you gonna do? It's it's a minor nitpick. Wait, is there not gonna be a family visit? Like now, does this? Because isn't it usually like right around now that they do the family well, visit? Well, I think that typically it's at probably six or seven. Yeah, and this um, was seven. This was seven. So if you don't see it next week, and it, they did not show it in the previews, yeah. I would not be surprised if family visit is potentially not an every season thing. That seems like one that you. I mean, it's emotional and it's great, but it's also like, you know, it's it's. Uh, yeah. How many more things can we do with it? I kind of wonder yeah. if was the Dawn Brenda take your teeth out. Are we ever going to get more drama than that? Right. I mean, it is great, though. You know, you do get, like, great funny moments from family where you have, you know, that whole Cochran's parents thing where they were, like, his dad was barbecuing. You know, that, that, was, that was great. And you get to see, like, a little bit of context for people. Um, and then, yeah, you're right. Like, you have those moments where, uh, like, someone is doing something horrible, um, you know, on behalf of the family. I'm sorry, I'm not even speaking English. Um, we, you know... Go, please, talk, talk more about Cochran's dad barbecuing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you think that's yeah not totally relevant to this episode. <laughs> um, th so, uh, what, what 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 about Spencer? You know, what 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 about Spencer and Tasha here? Are, are they playing well, a great game? Well, my question about tonight's episode, as I'm watching it, I really kind of felt like this was a kind of I, I kind of want to give them credit, and this kind of was you know a blessing from the gods that sort of fell into their laps. Because Stephen, did you feel like Tasha and Spencer were on the same page through the first forty-five minutes of the episode? I didn't, but then you know, but the the fact that the were they were they were working the same angle, they must have had some kind of they must have had some kind of like, hey, let's like maybe like make Tony afraid, you know? There must have, or do you think that they were, you know, that that Spencer was even throwing Tasha under the bus? I don't know. It was almost like that they were seemed to have no idea what the other one was doing. Like if they got together in the beginning of the episode it was like, "Okay, here's the plan. Tasha, you go hang out with the women all day and I'll plant seeds in Tony's head that you're trying to get the women the women's alliance started." Now, probably the reason why that they didn't talk about this was because Spencer's like, "Hey, if that gets Tasha voted out before me, right, right. great." That's right. what I'm saying. So, to a degree, I think it was Spencer trying to throw Tasha under the bus. It just so happened that she won immunity, and the plan and their interests became mutually aligned. Of if we can get Tony to think that I'm working with the women and get Tony to vote out one of the other women, then this plan works to both of our benefits. But it really seemed like for most of the episode, they were not working together on this plan, even though they kind of were working the same plan. Yeah, and the the coincidence of that is pretty pretty dramatic. I mean, you know, and, and you know, just having been in a close pair, like you you pretty much, 
I, I found when I was you know working things with JT that we would kind of intuitively work the same angles even when we weren't naturally even when we weren't having the conversation you do this you do that we would sort of be able to kind of feel it out like what what each other one was doing so I wonder even if they didn't have the explicit conversation if uh, you know they were kind of sort of picking up on each other's signals they've been together since you know since day one. So what do you think? Were they were they working together on this plan, or did they both arrive at the same plan separately? I mean, it, you know, the, then there, on the other hand, there was that conversation that Tasha had with Spencer when Spencer got, comes to him and says, you know, I think I've got a way out of this for us, and she's like, what did you do? Like she was surprised by it, right? So, you know, may, I I don't know, Rob. You think they weren't on the same page? Yeah, because Spencer, part of Spencer's plan is, you know, hey, if they vote out Tasha here and I get three more days, I'm, I think I'm okay with that. No, I agree. I mean, I think it works to Tasha's benefit. I'm sorry, to Spencer's benefit a little bit more. But, uh, uh, you know, if Tasha, she herself said she was trying to do that, you know, so like she's, yeah. So it's like they, they must, there must have been some communication. And we'll see. That's that's an interesting question uh, to ask to ask either of those two. Uh, how closely they were working on that on that plan together. Um, should we start to get into questions here? Yeah. Are there any big moments? I mean, there a lot actually happened in this episode. Any other big moments that we should discuss? Uh, uh, so we had the we had the auction. And I love I loved the uh, Wu's confessional where he was like like Tony comes and is like Wu, here's what we should do, and then Wu comes back and is like. Tony and I would just think alike. We just happened to have the same idea at the same time. Well, I thought that he he started off, he's like, yeah, Tony, Tony and I, nine times out of ten, we're on the same page. I'm like, okay, is this the, the one time out of ten? But no, this was one of the nine times <laughs> yeah, that yeah. they're totally on the on the same page where yeah. Tony comes and tells Wu the plan. And yeah, the says, plan is like, Wu will execute Tony's plans. That's the page they're on. Well, we're, we're due for number ten because so far all nine <laughs> times this season, Wu yeah. has been exactly where Tony has wanted him to be. Uh, can we talk about Spencer a little bit? bit about his conversation with Tony. How good of a job do you think he did with planting that seed in Tony's mind? I, I think he did a pretty... I don't think he oversold it. That's always the danger there is overselling. You know, what, what, what do you think? I thought he did a pretty good job. I really... Yeah. You know, yeah. I kind of feel like... Uh, and, and I feel like it, it made me feel like that Tony is um, going... is not quite on the level of uh, one of the really great players because you could you ever imagine like Boston Rob having a conversation with somebody on the bottom of the alliance the next person voted out and, and that person you know getting them to <laughs> what they're doing absolutely not I don't but think that's why this is like a better season than Redemption Island you know like that's what makes Tony so great is that Boston Rob will do the smart cautious safe thing and Tony's going to do the bigger thing the erratic thing the more showman like thing Tony's a showman no, we didn't really t talk about this, I feel like, at the beginning of the show. Was this a good move, bad move, terrible move, great move? Yeah, we sort of missed this. You're right. I mean, I think, I mean, you've got to objectively say bad move, right? Terrible, bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bad, Tony. Yeah. Very bad, 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 bad. Because, and the reason why this was such a bad move, the women's alliance was not real. It was yeah. not real. At least it at was just point. wrong. Right. And I mean, maybe it was Maybe at five, you could say that the three women were going to vote against uh, against Wu and Tony. And if at that point that did become real, does that change this? Um, yeah, no, of course it does, right? Like, and that's a real fear to have, right? That's a, I mean, on the other hand, like, are, are three people who you know come from completely different, you know, they're, they're on three different tribes. Uh, their personalities are not alike at all, you know, Jeffra, Trish, and uh, Cass, like, you couldn't pick three different, more different people. And, like, just the fact that they, like, their their chromosomes match up is somehow going to, like, lead them to make an alliance, you know, that, that's that's crazy. Yeah. So, I think it was a bad move. I mean, I, is it the worst move ever? Definitely not. But I think it was a bad move because I don't think that Tony buys himself that much more security. If his con real concern was... Hey, when we get down to five, the three women of 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 I'm sorry, Cass, Trish, and Jeffra are going to vote against me and Wu. He still doesn't have that security. Where yeah. it could be just as likely when they get down to six now that the that it could be Cass and Trish 
vote with Spencer and Tasha. Like, yeah, it, I mean, just as easily happen as the three women voting together. Yeah, yeah, Jeffra, you know, was thinking about flipping to Spencer's alliance, but, like, Spencer is Spencer's alliance, you know? Like, he had someone who was mar on the margin thinking of flipping, and, and he, he got rid of her over the person who actually is the other side, you know? At this stage in the game, the thing you always want to be doing is taking out the biggest threats to win, and right now, Spencer is the biggest threat to win. So, 100% should have voted for Spencer. Uh, uh, you know, we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, I agree. If your move was two weeks ago to vote out LJ because he was the guy who was the biggest threat to win, where if he said, if I, I'm looking in a mirror right now and I see myself in LJ, then I think Tony's got to also look in that magic mirror again and see that Spencer <laughs> is playing the game very hard. Spencer's the one out looking for idols, coming up with yeah. plans. And so I think that if you're Tony, I think you got to get rid of Spencer at that point and I think the the fears of the women's alliance are less than Spencer and Tasha staying together now at this point and working with those other two people that are still in the game. Yeah, and how many times have we seen, you know, the the scrappy little twosome just like make their way to the end because the alliance, you know, turned on itself. It's just uh, a lot, Rob. We've seen it a lot. All right, now Tasha, she wins three consecutive immunity challenges here, has proven to be the dominant challenge player here yeah. after the merge. I don't think too many of us had that coming in our predictions. So where does she stand in this? Are her chances to win the game better than Spencer's? I, I mean, the thing is, like, Tony is fixated on getting rid of Tasha, and Tony has the super idol. So uh, does that make Tasha, you know, the easy, the, like, the, the most likely target for next week unless she wins out? You know, probably so. I'll tell you where I think Tasha has more of an advantage than Spencer is that Tasha seems to have relationships with, with the Trishes and Cass where Spencer doesn't. Right. And so I kind of feel like she has more social relationships in the game than Spencer does at this point. But Spencer has the relationship with Tony who's driving the action. You know, Spencer is like whispering in his ear and he's the one who's sort of pushing things forward. It's going to be very fun, very fun to watch. All right, let's get into questions here. Okay, here we go. Question, question number one, Stephen. You want to kick this off? Yeah. Um, Sam Hamwich wants to know, does Cass still have, in Spencer's words, a 0% chance of winning the game? Uh, what do you think here, Rob? Well, tell me, do you think that Cass is coming off a little cranky in some of these episodes? Like, I don't know why she's, like, has to... It's seemingly... She comes back from Tribal Council and has to, like, talk very loudly, it seems to me. And she's like, see, I knew you had an idol because you weren't being a little jerk like you usually are. And, like, I, I don't know why she has... She seems like she can be unusually uh, rude sometimes to people. And I'm, not sure, and I'm not sure her. why. Spencer's also, like, a jerk to her. Well, well, you know, you talking, having strategy? I don't think so, Cass. You don't have strategy, you know? But that, like, was, that was one time, and that was a couple of weeks no, ago. I think that was, like, two like, times. I think he did it, like, last week. Like, even, oh, no, even it was this week. I'm sorry. Like, when, when like, she's like, I knew you had the idol. So like, well, if that's true, which I hardly, hardly believe, you know? He's just, like, you know, he comes off as arrogant, too, in those exchanges. I thought he was sincere when, it, when whenever he said, I thought he said that, basically, well, if that's, if that's the case, then I'll I'll give you a lot of props. Yeah, if that's the case, which I which I highly doubt, you know, like I mean, it was like he was like snooting at her. Yeah, I, you know what, I, I feel I just feel like Cass has been uh, a little is being a, a little a little, a little cranky. Like uh, you know, let's have let's have fun, let's smile a little bit, Survivor. Yeah, yeah, We're having a fun time. Okay, so uh, so what was the question? Cass, does she have a 0% chance to win? No, I don't think she has a 0% chance to win. Can we come up with a scenario where Cass wins the game? Yeah, I, you know, I, I really think anyone against Tony and Wu could, could win for the same reason, you know, it was like in uh, Heroes vs. Villains when you have Russell and Parvati, you know, like you've got Russell who everyone hates and Parvati who everyone thinks is Russell's, you know, was like too deep in bed with Russell. So, uh, uh, you know, and then they vote for the, the other person. Yeah, I still think that would be a tough sell. I don't, I'm not sure how Cass gets the, the jury votes there. I mean, you have a lot of people that don't even like Cass on the jury. So, I mean, the people that you would be banking on to get the non-Tony votes, uh, Sarah isn't going to vote for Cass. 
Morgan's not going to vote for Cass. You wouldn't think Spencer is is a vote for Cass. So that's already three people there yeah. out of the jury. So I think it's going to be a very uphill battle for, for Cass. I, I'm not sure how she does it. But as we all know, you know, the real decision is made at Tribal Council. Sure. Surely. <laughs> okay. Let's go uh, to I'll go Will. ahead. Okay. Yeah. Should Spencer and Tasha both gone to pull rocks, uh, it would have instantly lowered Tony's chances of pulling the black rock. How bad of a move was that for Tasha to make? I don't think it was an awful move. Uh, what do you think? No, I mean, it's, we talked about it a little bit earlier. You know, I think, you know, in these, in past auctions, and in fact, in the season 26 auction, uh, you know, there was both the challenge advantage and the idol. I think that it was, uh, I think it's actually the right move. You know, like, you, yes, you know, like Spencer winning, um, yeah, I mean, she has a one-third chance of winning uh, The Rock versus taking the risk that there's another, you know, another thing. It's not really, like, beating Tony, you know? Like, she doesn't need to just beat Tony. I mean, for her, like, she would almost rather Tony win it than Spencer win it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to also update that uh, Sarah Freeman tweeted to me uh, in regards to Cass. She says, you see Cranky, I see somebody who's having as much fun as Tony, just more reserved. Do you feel that, that, that may be true? I can, I can see that. I can see that about Cass. Yeah, she's like, she like likes her very like dry, sardonic one-liners. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Humberto Uruccia wants to know, uh, can this move by Tony help Cass in making people hate on him and forget her move at 11? So oh, that's long that's forgotten. Scenario. That's long forgotten. Cast this move at final eleven. That was like two really. Years you just ago. said that people are going to vote against her for because, because of that. Because I don't think they like her, not because that they uh, because of her move. Oh, really? I would think that it's like Sarah would vote against her because like she got Sarah out. She was responsible for that. I think it was because. Well, I don't think the move helped, but may, and maybe that's why they don't like her. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay. It seemed like they they dislike her more than that game move. Yeah. All right. I believe so, it. Okay. Uh, did we answer that question? Yeah. Okay. All right. Maybe. I don't how know. Many, <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Too much going on. Petit Chew Pumpkin. How many jury votes, if any, do you think Tony lost tonight? L LJ. That's an interesting one. Would Tony lose LJ for voting out Jeffra? I think Tony um, lost LJ for voting out LJ. For voting out LJ, right. Um, you know, that's a good question. Like, does he uh, lose Jeffra's jury vote? You know, the thing is, like, if he was going to vote out Jeffra eventually, he was always going to lose her jury vote. Yeah, I don't know. This is so hard to read. We have no idea if the jury is going to be anti-Tony yeah. or if they're going to say, you guys did nothing or, you know, you know, I'm giving him my vote because of what, because of whatever. So I have no read whatsoever on this. I, I, I am as clueless as anybody, Stephen. Yeah. Sorry, it's, it's not the insight that you guys tune in for, but I'm being honest. I have no idea. No, it's this this season. It's like Tony has has completely thrown out the rules of like what should it typically happens in a survivor season. You know, I think traditionally there's a series of alliances. Someone flips, that person's then voted out. You know, they look like a jerk. The fact that Tony has played this game has completely upended our expectations, and it's super exciting. And it definitely makes our job harder. Yeah, I feel like the net winners of all of this stuff that happened tonight were Spencer and Tasha because that's why I feel like they're in they're in a great position because they are advancing in the game and they're not having to backstab people because their alliance is all already gone and so right. it's Tony is the one that's backstabbing and they're the ones that are just moving forward without having to piss people off and they look great because they are still in the game and, you know, they're not just getting lucky, right? Like, they are doing the things to direct the chaos of Tony, you know? And, like, and it seems like Tony management is, like, the number one skill you need this season. You know, we saw it with my with my beloved Trish that week where, where Tony was, you know, when, when Jeffro went on the reward and then Tony, I guess that was last week, and Tony was flipping out about it. Um, and Trish was said, you know, I'm just going to go 
pick some coconuts and talk to you later. You know, that's a that's good Tony management. Um, and, and you know, conversely, you know, directing Tony against Jeffra is Spencer and and uh, and Tosh did it this week. So it seems like that's like the way to like swing the tides of the game is to just like focus Tony's crazy energy. Two things. One is another part of how it's great to be Spencer and Tasha right now. You know, if they get to the end, they both have like sort of like the Malcolm Denise story where it was like we were down and out, we were left for dead, we made it, we made it to the end. So they have already this great built-in story too, which right. really really helps them if they get to the end. And two, although it helps them even more to not be up against each other. And yeah. then number two. Steven, could we stop saying chaos every other word for the love of God? <laughs> really? Really? Is chaos like some new energy drink that has some viral marketing campaign to advertise on Survivor? Stop. Every nothing it's not always even though it it really has always been chaos. But it, we <laughs> stop come up with another word. Should we start that drink? I feel like that could be very successful. Yes, let's put out the RHAP energy drink called Chaos. <laughs> Chaos. Hashtags, look, we'll go to our investors. Look, that, it, 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 we've already got it trending. <laughs> it's trending already, Chaos. Yeah. <laughs> look at this. We'll get, we'll get Cass. To, or, now, is Cass or Tony our spokesperson? Yeah, I mean, but, you know, that's we we won't know. That's chaos, you know. We won't know who's going to show up for the spokesperson uh, for the for the spot. Um, what do you think about Tasha versus Spencer? Tasha and Spencer. Let's say it's a final two. Tasha versus Spencer. Who wins? Boy, it's tough. Let's. Can we go through the votes real quick? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, it, and, and we, are we assuming a final two yet, or are we assuming a final three? I'm still sort of assuming a final three, but this is like a thought experiment. Yeah, I'm doing a. I'm. Okay, let's let's play final two because that's how the weeks line up unless we're going to have a three-person finale. But, right. you know, until I hear final two, we should, you know, we don't want to assume. But yeah. it's like a covered item at the auction. Okay. So, all right, first person on, on the jury is Sarah. Sarah. Sarah votes for... Tasha. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay, Morgan votes for... Spencer. No, oh, Tasha. Why? Why Tasha? She's uh, that she was tight with with Tasha. When she when was? she gets voted off, she puts her hand on Tasha's knee and says it's oh, it's okay. I'm telling you, Tasha was tighter the knee, with these girls than the knee alliance. Okay. Yeah. We didn't okay. see that in the alliance. All right. Now we get to LJ, right? Spencer? LJ's a man's man. Man's man. Okay, sure. We'll go with that. Uh, oh, LJ might respect the immunity streak. That's the thing. Yeah, flip a flip a coin, Tasha yeah. and, and and Spencer. Okay. okay. And then after LJ got voted out, then last week was Jeremy, and Jeremy probably Definitely votes. I asked, Spencer. 100 I asked Jeremy Spencer. last week. Yes, who were you closer with? He said Spencer is my boy. And well, that so, was Cass's like fury. You know, was that 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 Spencer and Jeremy got so so tight? Yes, because they were immature uh, college, college age boys. guys. Yeah. So very yeah. selfish. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then this week, now Jeffra would vote for. You gotta think Tasha, right? Um. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. Why do you think that? Just because they are both women, you know, you've got this women's alliance on the. They're brain. hanging out in the water. We do we see any interaction between Spencer and Jeffrey? Yeah, at least, Spencer at least was in the water with them. No, Spencer was the one last week who like made the case to Jeffrey. I think Spence, I think Jeffrey might respect the strategic chops. Okay, well, I will give I'll give that one to you only because that LJ is voting for Spencer. So right, I think that's right. sort of she just does what LJ does. Uh, and then. We will go with, uh, although hopefully she votes before she sees what Spencer said about her in his confessional. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then we get to, uh, then, and now we have to figure out who gets voted out next week. So yeah, we we'll just like run down the line. Let's Tony, say it's Tony. Wu, well, it's not Tony. We know it's not Tony. Tony, Wu, and Trish. Okay, but they're going to be, and if Cass. it's a final two, and Cass. So if it's going to be a final two, uh, that would put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people on the jury. Yeah. Well, that, that yeah, okay. So we know Cass is voting for uh, Tasha. Tasha. We know and we Trish? think we'll, Trish probably Tasha. I and then know. Wu and Tony vote for Spencer. Yeah. What do we got? What what, what are the numbers? Is All it right. going to be a tie? Are they going to fire or whatever? Going to you know make a fire or whatever? That's four votes Spencer, four here. votes Tasha. The and? winner of Survivor <laughs> Kageyan is Spencer. Whoa! Wait, again, we 
we're so we're, we have like so many people that it's a coin flip. I have vote, Tasha. If you had just spent more time in the water, with... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, okay, no, that would be that would be a very very good vote. Yeah, and it, and it would be a mistake on either of their parts to take the other one. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah, definitely. Like they're the, they're their own worst enemies. Okay. Um, you want to take this one from Dylan? Yeah, Dylan has to say, uh, Dylan Opioke wants to know, I think Spencer Tasha should team up with Cass Trisha next week and take out Tony's right-hand man, Wu, to avoid the idols. Well, that's basically not what a bad we were saying. Plan. It's, not yeah. a bad, it's not a bad plan. It's a good way to go. That's sort of what we were saying. If you were Tony in that situation and you think there's a chance that you're getting flipped on, do you give Wu the idol? Um, and then you have the other thing, but does that really change things, though? Uh, well, you definitely get rid of at least one person, right? Right. Although then, then you're screwed the next week. Yes. So, so if Wu goes, Tony, but but Tony can't win out that way. I mean, I guess he just hopes that he wins, gets another idol. I don't know. What's the move? Well, I kind of feel like the move for Tony, unlike what Malcolm did, I feel like, hey, Hold if they vote it. out Wu, fine, vote out Wu, and right. then and then I, you know, I'm gonna play my idol at six. And then I still have Tyler Perry idol at five. Right. Uh, but then, than, then Tony's gone at, at four. Well, he's gone versus, at four. He's gone versus, at four no matter what. Uh, unless, unless he gives it to Wu, right, at six. So they take out someone. At five, they vote for Wu. And at four, they vote for him, and he plays his thing. And then he's there at a three. Fan fiction, Stephen. I know it's fan fiction. Yeah. It is. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, I think that Tony is in, uh, like, I think he's really caught in between a uh, uh, a white rock or a black rock in a hard place. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And a hard stone. Yeah. Okay. This is from Jason Weatherholt. Once, so should Tony <laughs> told his crew he found the Tyler Perry idol, do a Yule and display it. If they turn the tables, he still got a normal idol. I mean, that might be the move next week. If, if it's clear that he's about to get ganged up on, I think that might be the move because no one wants to be the person who takes that bullet for the team, you know? And if it looks like Trish and Cass are about to flip, and then he goes and says, look, you, one of you will go home because of this. You know, that might, that might, uh, that might keep him loyal. Um. Would though that okay? Let's let's play that scenario out where Tony says, "Okay, look, I got this idol. My friend Wu, he's got an idol. We are bulletproof. You cannot vote for us tonight. If you do, you one of you guys are gonna go home." Okay, so now let's now let's huddle up, Spencer, Tasha, Ka uh, Cass, and Trish. All right, if we split the vote tonight and do two votes on Tony, two votes on Wu, it's is it a it's a tie, and then do we have a revote? And then no, because they're both then, on you. No, because not none of the votes against them count. So whoever they voted for goes home. At least you flush the idols, though. At least yeah, the, but, those but guys at the expense of one of their like. But you were gonna you were gonna have to do that anyway. But not necessarily. Not if you're not if you instead plan to go to the end with Wu, to the, go to the end with them. Also, idols stop being useful at like final four or final th or final five. Uh, so really, the you know in that situation, if you're Cass and Trish, then you think, well, I guess we'll go to four with Tony and Wu, and then you know we'll do whatever we have to. Like that's the move. Like that, if they are put into that situation, I think that's the only thing they can do. Okay, boy, this is a, a real prickly situation that these survivors are in. Yeah. Travis Nix, why earlier in the episode wasn't anyone concerned with Tony bringing out the fake idol at last week's tribal council? Uh, because it, maybe they were, and it wasn't like worth you know spending airtime on. I, I don't know. It didn't seem like a huge deal with the fake idol thing. Um, yeah. What do you think, Rob? No, nah, I guess if it was a big deal, they'd show it to us. That's yeah. my Jos opinion. Joseph Naylor wants to know who is the tighter duo, Tony and Wu or Spencer and Taja. Uh, what do you think here, Rob? I will go with Spencer and Tasha. I think Tony and Wu. I think Spencer and Tasha would turn on each other in a heartbeat. Yeah, Wu has nowhere else to go. That's really yeah. the you know it's a you know marriage of convenience. I'm sure that either Tony or Wu would turn on each other, but I think Spencer and Tasha would instantaneously turn on each other if it, if it behooved them. Okay, uh, Rachel Lehman wants to know after tonight's Blindside, are we ready to move this season into top five Survivor seasons ever category? It's not how you start; it's how you finish. We have to see how it ends. We can't we can't say that. It's too okay. soon. Too soon. Too soon. Right. But it's it's up there. It's definitely up there. 
All right, Chris Penworthy. Uh, Sorry. I, uh, now that now that every beauty has been voted out, does this mean that the beauty actually is a handicap in the game of Survivor? Wow. A very. I mean, it is brains versus brawn, the matchup that we all wanted to see happen. That's what um, Rob Lowe said. Yeah. And really? Heidi. Yeah. Okay. What did he say? That be, being being very good looking is a disadvantage. Oh, okay. Yeah. And there you go. And that happened for beauty. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was good. It was a good mix, right? Uh, it was a really good... It, the premise was great. It was really fun to see it. You know, were... You know, was each tribe, like, truly brainiest or brawniest or most beautiful? Clearly not, but uh, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a fun way to divide it up. Okay. Um, Bruno wants to know, all this Tony flipping makes even Chaos Cast look loyal. If Cast Tony are somehow in the end together, who wins? Cast Tony or neither? <laughs> well, who's the other person? Is it just a vote of no, for nobody? Yeah, they just like the, the CBS just takes it takes it in and like it gives it to the next season. They add it to next season's prize pool. I think that Tony would beat Cass in the end. I'm yeah, I definitely think Tony would beat Cass as well. Because I think that they both like have that people mad at them for flipping around. But I think that Tony could say at, at least I made you know more moves in the game. I controlled my destiny more. And he did it his way. I did it. I did it my way. That's right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, two more questions. Zachary Zarnett Klein, why does Tony not let Trish in on his plans? After all, she was tightest with him pre-merge. Well, this one you can kind of understand a little bit more why he didn't let Trish in on this yeah. plan. If you're if you're worried about the women's alliance, you don't tell the women that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, all right. Sp spicy wasabi, uh, Stephen, bring us home. Why bring out the idol at Tribal? Tony had no reason to bring it out. I think Tony doesn't want the votes against him. You know, I think that's what's going on here, is that he, you know, he's got the super idol that he doesn't have to play, but I think he just wants, you know, put, put the fear. And again, Tony likes the spectacle. He likes the drama. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's underdone on Survivor, people who have the immunity idol wearing the immunity idol, you know, at Tribal Council. And I really feel like last week, like, if they would have... If Spencer would have, you know, worn the idol around his neck at Tribal Council and then, you know, had the cojones then to give it to Jeremiah, like I feel like that the people would have put they would have put their vote on Jeremiah if Spencer was wearing the necklace. That would be if, also a lot of cojones to vote for a person wearing the immunity idol around their neck at Tribal Council. Doesn't putting idol. out the idol mean you're not going to play it? Like isn't that sort of like the like whenever someone pulls it out they don't play it? But would you make that? I mean, you're sitting there. Know. You're gonna you're gonna make that bluff. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, but like theoretically, isn't that the case? I you, probably probably, yeah. and maybe that's the move. The vote for the person that's wearing the necklace at Tribal Council. Yeah. I think it might uh, be the move. Although the three amigos did play them, right? I think they did. I think they yeah. did. So, uh, it does seem like now people are pulling them out of tribal. Like, you know, I think, I don't remember who's the first, but, you know, Russell had a few high-profile uh, ways of doing it. But it seems like people are are pulling out their idols at tribal council. Steven, me and you are on Survivor, okay? We're okay. we're in an alliance, obviously. Oh, I don't okay? trust you. I don't no, trust you. Just, go, just be <laughs> nice for a minute. Okay, yeah. and so we're we're in an alliance, okay, and and we're we're gonna vote out. Uh, who who do you want to be? Who's the Sp okay? Spencer and Tasha. They're they're on they're on the other side, okay. Or oh, Spencer, oh. Spen Spencer and Jeremy, okay. Okay. We're we're voting we're voting them out. Spencer is wearing the immunity idol around his neck. Yeah. When we are we gonna still put our votes on Spencer? Well, the reason the thing is we know Spencer is a selfish twenty one year old. I think Spencer is playing it for himself. Okay, I so think it's a character thing, right? Like someone like Spencer will probably play it for himself. You could see someone like Tony playing it for somebody else. It's like who is the, who is the, what is the person most likely to do? It's situational. Okay, interesting. All right, All Stephen, right. fantastic job tonight as usual. Woo! Good note, all, Rod. This was a tough one. This was a really tough episode because there's just I'm still processing it. You know, maybe by tomorrow I'll have great. You know, and I'm sure once you talk to Jeffra. She'll explain everything that's going on. Lighten up. <laughs> um, Sorry, you know, it is hard to do this the way that yeah. that we do it. That we do it like right after. I'm sure that I, I'm sure that like when you're listening to this on Thursday, it seems like it's super frenetic and everything. And if we did the show like on Thursday or Friday, it would yeah. make a lot more sense. But yeah. uh, probably be a lot less fun. Yeah. No. 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 I mean, we, our minds being boggled is part of the part of the joy. Yeah. Uh, Stephen, great job again tonight. Who gets a fishy? 
I mean, I think I've got to give it to Spencer and Tasha both. You know, I think I've got to give it to the two of them for the hustle they pulled. A co-fishy? Whether or not it was uh, conscious, consciously working together or unconscious, uh, I, I don't know. But, you know, I, they, they worked together and it worked. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, co-fishy tonight. There you go. All right, yeah. so tomorrow morning I'll be speaking with Jeffra and hear what she has to say about everything that went down last night, see if she has some choice words for Tony. And then buckle up. We got a Tyson cast, Tyson's wow. first Survivor podcast uh, recap since winning Survivor Blood vs. Water. He's going to let it rip. He's going to he's going to let it rip. He said he wants to do a 6-hour podcast the other day. Uh, you should go for the si you should do the 6-hour podcast. You know, Tyson's got jokes for days. Jokes for days. Yeah, and just a l little uh little uh bad news for you guys. We're not doing video tomorrow because there's no way we're going to be able to s sit there and uh, go on and on if we're doing it on video. So if you want a longer podcast, uh, it's going to be audio only tomorrow. Oh man, this is like a, a Sophie's choice. Sophie's choice. Ask, no. ask Sophie what she uh, prefers. Sophie actually did video. Okay. Yeah. So there, so there you go. Um, Steven, thanks again. And uh, everybody, we had uh, so much fun tonight. We'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. And so we will see you uh, tomorrow with more Survivor Talk. Have a great night, everybody. And thanks, Jessica Frey. Great job with the comments, as usual. Take as care, always, everybody. great. Thanks, Ray Frey. Bye-bye, guys. Have a great night. Bye.